As humans, we've spread all across the world. But did you know that if we had to, we could all live in just one city the size of Texas? Today we're going to talk about population density. Hi everyone, welcome to Atlas Explains the World, the YouTube channel all about geography, maps, and data. As you saw in the intro, today we're going to talk about population density. But first, let's do a quick introduction. My name's Jeff Gibson. I am a professional geographer and cartographer, and really all I want to do with this channel is explore topics spatially with fun maps and data. And I hope that's what you're into, because there's going to be a lot more of this kind of stuff coming. Okay, let's get back to today's topic. So if you all enjoy maps, you've probably seen a map that looks something like this. This is a population density map of the United States. Hopefully the orientation isn't confusing. But what it's showing is the peaks and valleys of population centers. So we can see the very high peak of New York City and the Northeast Corridor at large, and then the valleys in the areas surrounding it. In particular, the entire western half of the country is basically very sparsely populated, and even where it is populated, the density is relatively low. If you're familiar at all with population in the United States, this probably is not all that surprising. But it leads to our very first question. What is population density? Population density is not that complicated. In fact, let's walk through it right now. This box is one square mile, and this box is one square kilometer. More on that later. Anyway, if we had just one person within our box, how many people per square mile would we have? Yeah, exactly, one person per square mile. Now let's kick it up a notch. If we had 10 square miles, and in each of those square miles we had 10,000 people, how many people per square mile would we have now? Well, if you said 10,000 people per square mile, you'd be correct. Population density is actually a pretty simple mathematic formula where you just take the number of people that you have in any given area and divide it by the size of your area. Population density is not that complicated. And hopefully, if you already knew this, this was just a nice little refresher because it's really gonna matter when we go through our maps in a few minutes. Now let's illustrate population density by using a few example cities. But first, I have a quick question for you. If I were to ask you between Houston, New York City, and Paris, which one was the densest, which one would you choose? I'll give you a few seconds to figure it out. And in the meantime, if you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe it. It really helps me keep my motivation going. Okay, do you have your answer? Good, okay, hold on to it because we're gonna run through our three cities right now and we're gonna use those same density boxes from before to illustrate the density of each city. First up, we have Houston. Hopefully you did not guess that Houston was the densest of our three cities because it's absolutely not. In fact, while downtown Houston looks like this, much of the rest of it actually looks more like this. Houston only has about 3,500 people per square mile. As far as cities go, that's really low density. Next up, we have New York City. Yes, that's right. New York is a very dense city, but it is not in fact the densest of our three cities. New York has about 29,000 people per square mile as a whole. So let's add some people to our box. Of course, if you were to just take Manhattan, it would be almost three times as dense, which just goes to show that density can be manipulated depending on the area size you're using. And of course, the densest of our three cities, Paris. Paris has about 53,000 people per square mile. Let's go ahead and add those people to our box. As you can see, Paris is very dense, but it's also different in its density from our two American cities. While New York and Houston have very pronounced skylines, which often create a huge amount of density in relatively small areas, Paris is more spread out in its density, instead having mid-rise buildings basically everywhere. And look at that. Here's our three density boxes side by side. These boxes are pretty close to how each of these cities feel if you were to just walk around on any given sidewalk. Impressive, right? Okay, we've talked a lot about population density, so let's get to the meat of this video, the maps and the data. We are going to take each of our three cities, Houston, New York, and Paris, and visualize if every single person on Earth lived in a single city with the same population density as them. I hope you're ready because it's gonna be damn cool. Today, there are about 7.9 billion people living in the world. Our cities, by comparison, are tiny. But what if all 7.9 billion people lived in a city with each of our city's respective densities? Well, it would look something like this. Here's Houston. As we can see, a single city with all 7.9 billion people would take up most of the continental United States. That's a lot of area, but compared with the world size, still fairly small overall. Next, we have New York. The Big Apple would take up an area just about the size of Texas. 
if we're talking about a single city, that's still pretty massive. But on a global level, that's actually not that much space. And finally, we have Paris. A single megacity with the density of Paris would take up the size of just three states, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. On a global level, that's a truly small size. In fact, I would argue that there are already areas within Europe and Asia that come close to that physical amount of space, but obviously without the same consistent density. But not all of these cities would look and feel the same, right? Remember, Houston mostly looks like this, New York like this, and Paris like this. Each is a pretty big step up from one another in terms of density, and you can feel that through these images. Of course, none of this accounts for what it would take to actually feed and supply a city the size of this. This is just a hypothetical example to illustrate population density in a fun way. That said, if we did all live in a single city with the population density of Paris, that would actually not be too bad. Paris is a beautiful city, guys. Hey, I hope this video taught you a thing or two about population density and geography. If you want, feel free to look up your home city's density and drop it in the comments. I would actually love to see that. If you like maps, if you like geography, please like and subscribe to this video. It really keeps me going. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.